word of God. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brother Fred uh, this afternoon, and uh, we're going to uh, begin, uh, begin the teaching. Today, I want to talk about the power of God that is within you and how to activate it and how to release it and how to, uh, to grow in that, in that power. You know, Ephesians chapter one, it talks about the power of God that there's a prayer that Paul prayed uh, that we can have the same power of God within us that he used to raise Jesus from the dead. So that's the power I'm going to be talking about today, and it's the power that is within each of you as a believer. Uh, the power of God is very powerful. It, it's the power that, that created the universe. When he, when he said worlds come into existence, he, he created everything uh, with his words and with his power, and, and that's the power that's within you, not only that power, but at that time, there was no opposition uh, to him when he created the worlds, but when he raised uh, Jesus from the dead, there was opposition, all kinds of opposition. And so that's the power that's operating in our lives uh, through Jesus Christ, the power within you. And it's the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Now, when you were born again, the power of God came within you through the Holy Spirit because the power comes with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is the power of God. And so when he came into your life, when you were born again, then when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you receive an expansion and an increase and a multiplication of the power to overflowing. But I want to talk about two different uh, forms of the uh, power, and that's the anointing and grace. And, and they're very similar. They both operate uh, through the Holy Spirit. They come from God, of course, through the throne of God, and, and they pour out to you, and then you, you release that power, and it pours out to other people through you. So the power is very important, and we need to understand these two different concepts, because this will help you overcome adversity, and be victorious. Uh, so let's think about these two things, the grace of God, that's the operational power of God, and the anointing, and that's the power of God to minister to people. Now, well, I want to say that there are some similar things. They're very similar of uh, the anointing and grace, but there are also some important differences. So so that's the reason I want to talk about them, but show you how to activate them and how to increase them in your life. Okay, so the anointing then is uh, the power of God to minister uh, to people. And the best way to understand the anointing is to look at Jesus Christ. So when he came to the earth, he laid down all of his glory. He laid down all of the power. He laid it all down. Uh, so he's always been the word of God, and he's, he is the word of God. He'll always be the word of God. So Jesus is the word of God. But he never performed a miracle until he was about the age of 30, and when he would, went and became baptized. So he was baptized in the River Jordan by his cousin, John the Baptist. Okay, so up until then, he had never performed a miracle. But now, what happened when he came up out of being baptized in the river, the Father, listen to me, the Father revealed him to be his son. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And that was when he was anointed. So the anointing is on the word of God, on the revealed word of God. And so if the Holy Spirit reveals the word of God to you, then that becomes the anointed word that you carry. And you'll always carry that anointed word. Uh, I, I, want, I like to refer back to my own life and, and my own history, and that is... Uh, 
when we were told that our daughter was going to die, that's when I got in, I got serious with the Lord at that point. I got mm-hmm. serious with the Lord and, and I asked the Lord to show me. And, and so the Holy Spirit revealed many scriptures about healing. And so that's why I carry the anointing about healing and certainly Sherry does too. It's because during that period, the Holy Spirit revealed those words. So up until that time, the word of God was just a written word. And I knew it was precious because I was born again from the time I was 13. So I knew the word of God was precious, but it didn't become alive to me until the Holy Spirit began to reveal those scriptures. And they they came up off of the page and they became the living word of God, which is Jesus. So the living word of God, so the reveal. Okay, so Jesus never performed a miracle until he was anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing. And then after the the river Jordan, he went to the synagogue. Of course, he had gone through the desert. I'm I'm not going to go into that story, but he goes to a synagogue afterwards. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to free the captive. So that's Luke chapter 4, verse 18. So when did the anointing happen? It happened when he came up out of the river. The dove, the Holy Spirit came down on him like a dove, and that's when he became anointed. He has always been the word of God. When he was in eternity, uh, before time began, he was the word of God. When he came to the earth as a child, he was the word of God. Mary carried him as the word of God, but he wasn't really revealed yet until the father said, this is my My beloved beloved son son in whom I'm well pleased. And so the anointing is on the revealed word of God. And Jesus then began doing miracles and and healing the people. He, He did great and mighty things after he was revealed he is the beloved son of the father and he was anointed Mm -hmm. by the holy spirit so that's where the anointing comes from now the first time i ever saw the anointing in operation that it was very clear to me and it really opened my eyes that i was in a funeral for a young person and a, a very popular young person and so there were a lot of ministers there and because there was a young person, the, the, uh, there was just this cloud of heaviness over all the people. There was so much grief and so much oppression uh, because this young person had died, okay? And, and so there were lots of ministers there to uh, speak, and each one spoke for a few minutes. And the first ministers that ministered, uh, the first preachers that ministered, Uh, They spoke very eloquent words. You could tell they were very educated, very intelligent, but the oppression continued and it did it preacher after preacher. There was no no break in the oppression until an old country preacher got up and he was anointed uh, and by the Holy Spirit. And when he stood up and started to minister, there was a break in the atmosphere. There was a change in the atmosphere. And where the people had been in grief and oppression and, and, and beaten down, all of a sudden there was the comfort of the Holy Spirit there. The, the whole atmosphere changed. And that's when I first saw it. I first saw the difference between just sweet words and, and and smart words and intellectual words and enticing words versus the anointing on the revealed that's word of God. God because that's when the Holy Spirit begins to move that's when the atmosphere begins to change that's when the hearts are touched Hallelujah. by the anointed word of God I mean, so I mean, it is brought forth to minister, minister to the people and and it says uh glory to God in Acts chapter chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Anointed Jesus, Jesus. listen to me, how he anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So the anointing 
destroys the works of the devil. And, and there it is. It's, it's the revealed word of God. See, you carry within you, Colossians 1.27 says you carry a mystery within you. It's Christ, the, the anointed, anointed one, one inside of you. So you have the anointing in you. Now we know from 1 John chapter 2 verses 20 and 27 that you have this anointing within you and by the anointing within you, you know the truth. It's the anointing. It's the mm -hmm. unction. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to do something, then this anointing will either, it'll show you like a traffic light. It'll be green or it'll be yellow or it'll be red if it's a, if if you have within you an unction of the holy spirit and that's green then you go forward and if it's a yellow you you proceed mm -hmm. cautiously. cautiously and if you have this unction within you the anointing within you that's a red light then you stop you don't do that you know i was going to buy uh, some real estate one time and i had this unction within me stop now don't do that don't buy that well later on we found that house I should never have bought that house. It had some real problems, but it was by the Holy Spirit I knew that. And, and so the anointing, with the anointing, you know what's true and you know what's a lie. See, if people do not have the anointing, if they're not operating in the anointing, they will believe a lie. You wonder why there's so much confusion in the world? Because they're not carrying the anointing and they're believing lies and deceptions and they don't have the truth. And so they are believing a lie and they're doubting the truth when they don't have the unction of the Holy Spirit within them. Okay, now I want to switch to grace because grace is the power of God within you. And it comes, of course, like I mentioned earlier, it comes from God. It comes yeah. from the throne of God. Of God. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Grace. And that's pretty exciting. So we, we know that when he comes into your life, he's going to carry grace. Mm. Okay, so what is grace then? Well, James puts it this way. James 4, 6 said, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So he gives you grace to do his will. See, proud, prideful people, Proud people do their own thing in their own strength. But those who are humble receive the grace of God to do, and that's the operational power of God, to do God's will. Proud people do not do God's will. It takes a humble person. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. John chapter 5, verse 19. I can do nothing. Jesus said that. Well, we knew he, he could just do about anything. Uh, but, but he said, I can do nothing of myself because he's going to do it by the power. And, and he said, I only do what I see my father do. And I only do, only speak what I hear my father say. Mm. So he was a humble person. He was the most humble person you could imagine. He knew he could do nothing on his own. It was all by the Spirit of God operating through him. Now, you might think, well, he was the Son of God, but he laid all of that down to come down to the earth. He laid it all down. And so what the miracles we see Jesus doing, he did them as a man filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He did what he saw the empowered Father do, the and he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So he... And that's the reason he could say in, in uh, Luke 14, 12, that he that believes on me, the works that I do, uh, shall he do also. So if you're a believer, you can do what Jesus did because what he did, he didn't do it because he was the son of God. He did it because he was a man filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Well, that's no different than you and I. We are sons of God empowered by the Holy Spirit. And Christ lives within us and the Spirit is within us. He empowers us to do the will of the Father. So you have the anointing is to minister to people. It's on the revealed word. So the word that has come alive to you 
You have anointing on that. You carry that. But grace, you see, grace is to do God's will. Now, God gives you grace for an assignment. Mm -hmm. He gives you an assignment, then he gives you the grace to fulfill that assignment. You look at Sherry and I, we've done many different kinds of ministry over our life. We started out ministering to children in the low-income areas, just in neighborhoods. We would go in there and minister to children, okay? And, and we did that because God led us there to do that, and so we had grace to begin that, and and that grace led uh, led uh, for a while and, and was there with us for a while. And then that grace lifted and we moved on to another direction. We, we created an, a mission for homeless people. We ministered there. So we had the grace to do that, to pray for the people and, and see them healed and delivered and saved. The on the street. And, and so we had grace to do that for a period of time. And then the grace shifted. See, grace is given for an assignment. So you have to be sensitive to whether or not you have grace to do something. Now, this is what a lot of people don't realize that they may go out and start a ministry. They may have grace uh, and then uh, things are going very well because it's, you can do it. You can accomplish things and be successful w without any effort uh, it looks like, because you've got the grace of God on, but then that grace lifts and it changes and you're supposed to go so, and do something else. But if you stay in that ministry, when there's no grace there, then it becomes striving and work. Uh, but when we uh, were in one ministry versus the children, then we moved over to the mission and the homeless people. And then we started ministering in the, in the jails and in the prisons and the drug rehab uh, facilities with people uh, getting off drugs and, and uh, uh, getting their lives back together. And so we each time we'd have grace to move into those areas and the grace would be there for a time. And then and then the grace would lift and the time the season would be over. With. So we did a lot of different kinds of ministry, but we only did it for the seasons that God led us there. And so the, we had grace for a season, but grace is not forever uh, for a person. It's when... It's to do God's will. It's to do God's will. Okay, so what does the grace do? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Paul said, there's something laboring on the inside of me, and it's grace. grace. I, I'm doing uh, all these things, but it's not really me that's doing it. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God, and there's inside of me the grace is laboring and makes me look good uh -huh. <laughs> Glory to God. that's what grace does it makes it makes you look like you know what you're doing and makes you uh look like you you can accomplish things but it's by the grace of god that's the reason we have to give him glory Amen. it's all about the grace and so we have experienced this that we had grace to start uh, uh, in a season for a particular project and then and then uh, would be very successful. And then after a while, we could, we knew by the Holy Spirit that that grace was lifting and we were being directed into other directions, other, other things. So, so we ministered in jails and prisons for years and years, but there was a time that that grace lifted and, and we started putting more emphasis in the international arena. So we've been working, um, what we've been doing in a lot of different areas, but particularly in the last uh, um, 15 years, primarily in the in the international arena. So we, we've been, uh, and, and of course, uh, many of you know that uh, we started in the international arena there in Honduras. That's on right, in Roatan, Roatan, uh, uh, back in 93, and, and we've been working there uh, and coming and visiting and you our family and uh, we love each and every one of you. And, and so we have grace to do these things and we've had grace to do different things, but we needed to know when the grace was there and when it was not, because we've been, in, even in a particular service, uh, we could be ministering and then somebody could do something crazy and the Holy Spirit would just back off and, and leave. And, and so at that point in time, we, we could uh, stay there and do it in our own work, but that's going to be a failure. If, if we continue to work uh, when the Holy Spirit has lifted, 
uh, because somebody does something crazy, uh, like uh, singing a, a song of doubt and unbelief, all of a sudden people uh, don't understand, but you've got to be sensitive to the to the spirit or, or a person give, gets up and, and says something that's not of God. I mean, the Holy Spirit's going to just be back off. And so we have to know, we have to be sensitive when we're operating with the grace and when we're not. Uh, an, another thing about the grace is it strengthens us. You know, uh, Paul needed help and strength one time and mm -hmm. uh, he asked for help and, and uh, Jesus said to him, my grace is, is sufficient. sufficient. Glory to God. I'm talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said, my grace is sufficient for power is perfected in weakness. So when you're weak and you realize it and you call on, on the Lord Jesus Christ and ask for grace and he gives you that grace, then his grace is perfected and you can do things that you could not do otherwise. You see, uh, your ability may come up to this level. Uh, let's say just kind of a low level, you may have ability to do some things up here, but God's always calling you up to a higher level. And, and so when you realize your ability is not enough to do what God wants you to do, God wants you to come way up here and do these kinds of things, but your ability is down here, very limited. But that, and then grace is going to kick in and, and begin functioning when, when you... Uh, humble yourself. when you humble yourself and you realize this is as far as I can go I, I've got to depend that's when grace is going to kick in and allow you and empower you to do what God really wants you to do Amen. so we need that power and of grace and and uh first Peter 4 10 uh says if you've received the gift and this is the gift of the Holy Spirit then then minister the same one to another uh, as good stewards of what? Of the grace. Now, do you know you're a steward of the grace? You've got to be sensitive. You've got to care for the grace. Oh, this is the grace. I've got it. Uh, it's in me, and I, I, I've got to pray for this person, or I've got to uh, uh, preach here. I've got to do this. Uh, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as a good steward. Take care of, of that grace. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so I've talked about well, two things. I think Sherry has something. Well, there's a, there's a scripture that says we're not to frustrate the grace of God. We're not to grieve the Holy Spirit, and we're not to frustrate the grace of God. And I believe that it is it's frustrating when when the time is over with where we're where we're working uh, in the kingdom, and God has something else for us to do. And we just continue to be in that place uh, because it's comfortable and because we know what we're doing. And, and but God is calling us to another assignment. And, and but and so to stay there is frustrating uh, the grace of God. Well, I, I'm going to give a, a personal example here. The uh, we were in a congregation and we were uh, going uh 40 miles away and, and actively involved and we were uh doing a lot of things in that particular uh congregation and then the lord said to me uh that my i had responsibility here in in this city and in this surrounding area and, and so i told sherry and she didn't really want to go at that time she she didn't want to go because she was so involved there in that congregation oh i mean she was uh, a teacher and uh, treasurer, a treasurer, and and taking care of the money and all doing all of these things. And it was very comfortable to stay there, and, and so uh, for a year we just sat there. But in my mind, in my heart, I was obeying God. But but we were just waiting. Uh, the Holy Spirit and I were just waiting on Sherry to come in line with what God was saying. And then what happened, Sherry? Well, there was some. Um one afternoon that the Holy Spirit, I heard him ask me a question, and that was, are you con going to continue to be disobedient? And that got my attention, and I began to ask the Lord, what areas am I disobedient? And that was one of them, and that was staying in that particular place uh, when my husband had said that it was time to 
uh, to leave. And, and so I repented and I asked Brother Fred to forgive me and we moved forward uh, with uh, the will of the Lord. And I think that's important that even though I had heard from the Lord and he had given me direction to go in a different way, uh, that I didn't beat it over, beat Sherry over the head with it. I told her, and then I just waited for the Holy Spirit to deal with her. So the devil will push you and cause you to make decisions and, and, and get you out there when you're not really ready. And, and God may have already told you some things, and it's the devil that's going to push you and push you and push you. The Holy Spirit guides you and leads you. And so he's drawing you uh, to what God has for you. So that's real important. And, and so there was no reason for me to take it out on my wife. I just sat there. There was no rush. I just sat there and, and waited. But in my heart, I, I'd already left that congregation for a year. In mm -hmm. my heart, I had left. I had already gone to where the Lord told me to go and do what he had told me, but yet I couldn't because my wife hadn't heard from the Holy mm. Spirit to do that. And so we sat there, uh, but then the Holy Spirit dealt with her and we were in unity and we moved on. There was no rush on it. There, I didn't have to. I didn't have to make things happen uh, because I needed to flow by the Spirit and, and go by the Spirit. Okay, now, I'm bringing this to a conclusion, and I want to say uh, that these are two different things, and I want to show you uh, the anointing is on the revealed word, and the grace is to do God's will, and so as I told you before, that the first things that became alive to me, the first scriptures related to healing, but since then, the Holy Spirit has revealed many things, many, many different things, and so there there are anointing in a lot of different areas, but I want to focus on healing because that's, I love to talk about healing um, because I know that Jesus is the healer yeah. and he paid the price of her healing for all of us on the cross. Okay, so I have healing and sure, certainly Sherry has healing in, in her as well. We carry the healing. Okay, so if, uh, there are two people in a hospital room and there are two sick people. And I go in uh, to those rooms. I can pray for both people, both of those people. I can pray for both of them. And I'm releasing my anointing to, for healing for, for the first person. And then I go into the other door. I can release my anointing on that person, pray for that person. Okay, so that's the anointing. I always carry it. It's been revealed to me. It's the word of God that has been revealed to me. It's not because of what I have intellectually. And those uh, preachers I was talking about that they have an intellectual knowledge and they're educated, but they don't have the anointing, see? So, but the people that have the anointing can carry it wherever they are. They can release it wherever they are. And so I could go into either one of those rooms and pray for those two sick people, okay? but God may send me to one and not the other. And so when I go to the room that he tells me to go to, then there is a releasement of both the anointing and, and the grace. grace. And then there's an explosion of power because it's not just one or the other, but it's both of them operating together. And so go where God sends you and do what, you have been anointed to do. That is both grace and the anointing, and there's an explosion there. I want Sherry to tell us about a time that the Lord sent her to a particular room in the hospital. Let, let's tell, tell right. that story, Sherry. Well, this was um, in the, the early time after we had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I was uh, training myself to hear, uh, training my ear to hear uh, what the Spirit would say uh, unto me. And one afternoon, the Lord, um, I heard the Lord say to me, uh, go and buy a dozen roses, red roses, and go to a particular hospital. We have two hospitals here in, in the town that we live in. And he told me specifically to go to one of the hospitals 
And I said, well, what am I going to do there? And he says, I'll tell you when you get there. And so I went to the hospital. I sat in the parking lot uh, until I heard from the spirit of the Lord. And he told me uh, to go in and to go to a particular room um, in the hall. He gave me the number of, of the room. And so I went up to the third floor and I went to the nurse's desk and I asked if I could go into that particular room. And she said, uh, yes, uh, you, you can. Do you, know, do you know this person? And I said, um, no, I, I don't, but I want to give these roses to that person. And so she allowed me to, to go and I walked into the bed, I walked into the hospital room and the woman who was uh, an elderly uh, woman sit up in the bed and she said, oh, Jesus, you brought me roses. She didn't see, she didn't see me. She didn't know who I was. We were strangers, but the Lord knew that she needed encouragement. And, and so this is, it was exciting. I'll never forget it. That was, you know, 35 years ago. And I will, to this day, it seems like it was, it was just happening. And, and what she, she began to, to thank the Lord. And, and, and she saw past me and, and saw, saw Jesus. And so this is, you know, when that, when that anointing is there and the grace is there, uh, the Lord, that's when he does mighty things uh, with each one of us. And, and that's what he wants to do with each one of you. See, that was a real good example of Sherry going where the Lord sent her. So she released the anointing and she released the grace. And the woman didn't even see Sherry. She saw Jesus mm -hmm. bringing roses to her because that was the combination of anointing and grace. Now, I want you to think about Jesus Christ. He was anointed to heal the sick. He mm -hmm. raised the dead. He could do all of that, right? Okay, but where did he go? Well, I want you to think about Bethesda, and there was a pool. There were pools there, and, and, and a multitude of sick people and impotent people uh, and, and lame and blind, all kinds of infirmities in those people. And so there were a, a multitude of people around waiting for an angel to come down and stir the water. And Jesus was anointed and he could have healed them all. And Luke chapter five, verse 17 said the power was there to heal them all. It, the power. So the anointing was on Jesus to heal them all, to heal them all. But he only healed one. He only healed the one that God sent him to. Oh, there were a multitude of people that needed healing and they wanted healing and they were all around that pool waiting for uh, an angel to stir it. And Jesus went by and he was anointed to heal them all, but he only went to one because he said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. I can do nothing of myself. And so that's the same for you. You, you, you might want to think, well, if the healing is real, why don't we go into the hospitals and just heal everybody and, and pour the people out of the hospital because we can only do what we see the father do and we can only speak what we hear the father say. We can do nothing of ourselves. Jesus said in John chapter 15, you can do nothing of yourself. It's by the Holy Spirit. You have to know what scriptures have been revealed to you, and that's the anointing you carry, but you can only release the grace where God sends you, and you have to be sensitive to where he's sending you, and that's where you will impact lives and change lives where he sends you. Okay, Amen. Sherry. Amen. Turning it over to Sherry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is where the, the man in Cuba, or is that something else? No. Okay. No. okay. Well, as far as uh, releasement of, of the revealed word, 
Uh, you know, it says in Ephesians 3.20 uh, that God is able to do exceeding above what we even ask or think according to the power that works in us. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Spirit to begin to move and manifest himself in each one of you that you will go where God tells you to go, where you're sent, and that that grace will be released from you uh, to bring bring healing, bring hope, bring comfort, uh, bring um, uh, abundance to to people. Uh, this is um, I believe that the story of the man on uh, the the Good Samaritan uh, on the road. Uh, he was going down to Jericho. I believe that that was a releasement of uh, anointing uh, that the Good Samaritan carried, which we know that that's a type of Jesus, that uh, our Savior. And, and so when he stopped to help the man on the road, I believe that that anointing was there uh, to bring healing, but also the grace was there because because God had sent him uh, to help that man. And so there was an explosion and the man was, was restored, uh, was blessed, uh, received abundance. And, and there are so many right now that, that need you. And they, they need uh, each one of us uh, to bring hope and encouragement, healing, both uh, in our physical bodies, in our emotional states, in our attitudes. There are so many that God wants to send you to minister to. And so I just release that power uh, of anointing and grace uh, to go into each one of you and for you to, uh, to move as the Lord tells you to move. Put on gallery. Okay, we're going to open it up, and there may be questions uh, that you have uh, about, about what we've taught on today, what Brother Fred has taught on. Uh, if you have a comment or a question, uh, just uh, unmute yourself, please, and let us hear from you. Uh, we've been praying for all of you, because I know this has been a very uh, difficult time. And we've been we've been praying for each one of you. So, are there any comments? Any questions? I believe uh, is uh, Isabel. Uh, I have a word for Isabel. Isabel, I'm looking at your. Um, your blood right now. Um, she needs she needs it, she needs that word interpreted. Okay, she don't thank understand. You. okay. Hey. I'll um, I'll do it. I'm, she's there with me, and I'm interpreting in it. Nazaria. Okay, okay good. She's in my room. Okay. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. Um, the I see the Lord purifying her blood. She's, she's had some toxins in her blood. And, and, and I see, I see the Lord uh, just cleaning out her blood and, and making it stronger. That she will have more energy. She has two arteries, two arteries that are partially blocked. They're not, it's not a serious thing. But there are times that she feels a little bit of, of pain in her chest. Tell her not to be afraid. Because the Lord is cleaning out those arteries right now.
that she's going to be stronger. And she's going to have more energy. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, I have a word um, for Pastor David. Um, brother, the, the Lord, he, he has um, great things uh, that he is planning for you. And there are times when uh, you might think that that you're sitting down, but the Lord sees you, the Lord sees you standing up and he sees you as a mighty warrior and he sees what he has put on the inside of you and he has put a great deal of himself on the inside of you. And so he says, I have plans for you that you have not even thought about yet. But he says, as you, as you come to me with the attitude of humility and you put on that garment that, that, uh, you, that you're clothed with humility, uh, then the Lord is going to re reveal to you exactly where he wants you to go and what he wants you to do. Because at this time, others are looking to you to be a strength and a hope and an encouragement to them. Because you're steadfast. You're not, you don't move. I mean, you're like a huge oak tree that, that you know, you you could cut it down if you really wanted to, but it would take a lot of effort and a lot of sawing uh, to get that tree down. Well, you're just, a, you're like that oak tree that you're, you're, you're strong and it's going to be very difficult for someone to just reach over and push you down. And so what I see, uh, my brother is, such a um, such a job that you have to do. But the Lord says he's going to give you, like Brother Fred said, the anointing, the reveal word that's in you, he's going to take that and he's going to put grace with it because his grace is sufficient for you to do what you've been called to do. And he's going to, he's going to bring, you're going to be an explosion wherever you go. If you go to the coast, you're going to be an explosion. If you go to the mountains, you're going to be an explosion. If you stay there by the, by the beautiful ocean, you're going to be an explosion. Wherever you are, you are like a stick of dynamite. And so I pray over you right now. I pray over you in the name of Jesus for a fresh, uh, a fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh wind uh, to come upon you that you will feel the presence of God around you. Even in the middle of the night, you're going to get up and you're going to be walking around and Sister Harriet's going to say, you know, what are you doing up? And you're going to say, I am before the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We love you, yes. brother. We love you. We love you, Hallelujah. too. Amen. Amen. I received that today. In uh, Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Does anyone have a comment or a question? What are you going to take with you today? Brother Fred, I like the part about the explosion. When you put, when you put both of them together, the, it becomes explosive. Yes, hallelujah. Um, repeat it again. It's the Holy Spirit and the obedience or knowing where he is doing what he's saying to do. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. That's Amen. the grace. That, that's a grace. Yeah. The, the anointing is the reveal, the word that God has revealed to you over your lifetime. That's the anointing, the things that you know. And you can release that anytime. But when, Amen. But when you follow the grace, when you follow the Holy Spirit where he's in you, that's the grace. Because you have grace to do an assignment. And it, it may lift if you're not doing what God is telling you to do uh, because it's going to be with the assignment. Amen. So when you embrace the assignment, you're embracing the grace. Amen. Amen. And both of them together then makes that beautiful explosion. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. Very, Amen. very good. Very good. Amen. And, and, and Sister Harriet, you and Brother David, uh, well, you're just, you're precious to us, but, and uh, so we're partial. Um, yeah. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say that you're, you're a, you're a team and that uh, you strengthen one another uh, with the word of God. And, and also uh, that just like you told Paul, whatever he's calling the two of you to do. He will give you the grace and the anointing to do it. And he says, Amen. my grace is sufficient to both of, for both of you uh, Amen. To, to, do, to do that. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you. Thank Hallelujah. you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I speak to the prayer warriors that are, uh, that are watching uh, that uh, much prayer is needed not only for your your whole nation, the whole uh, nation of Honduras, but but for the believers there uh, in your different uh, areas, uh, those that you um, know, those that you minister to, those that are family. Uh, that uh, there's a we strengthen one another uh, with yes. the word of God. Amen. And, and so uh, I know that I've been encouraged. Uh, Micah has uh, uh, been been with us on some of our other videos. And and, uh, you know, that every time I see his name up there, you know, I, I get uh, I get excited and I get uh, encouraged, you know, by by that. So we we need to encourage one another. We need to Amen. Uh, not only pray for one another, but but let people know, uh, you know, give them a, a call or go by and see them and, and just, uh, you know, this is a time of, of standing together, shoulder to shoulder. Um, yes. and, and it says to, you know, take on each other's burdens. That doesn't mean that we, we do everything for them, but that we take on the excess, the, you know, that, that they might be overwhelmed uh, in in something, and so uh, we we encourage you to uh, to stand together with with each other. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any other comments or questions? I'm going to turn it over to Sister Harriet right now. Okay. Yes, yes. No, it's just um, just to confirm that, you know, the, um, the word that Brother Fred shared just now is the same word we received this morning. Yeah. You know, um, um, we had a sister from the church sharing and where Jesus, you know, had a, left everything and come down to be man in order to, you know, to take the, um, to do the task that he had to do on earth. It had to be in, he had to be a man. Yes. And so, and even though that he couldn't do nothing until he had the anointing, 
you know, so it's, uh, your word this evening is a confirmation to us, even though we know the word and God is keeping repeating to us that we got, we got this word got to revive, you know, it got to come alive to us so we could see really the manifestation of yes. God for our life. Thank Hallelujah. you. God bless Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Sister Harry, we'll turn it over to you, hon. Um, Sister Sherry, some time ago you had told me that we were going to be grandparents again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Day, we got the we got the the word, the message. That we're going to be parents again. We got the news, yeah. All yeah. right, <laughs> all <laughs> right. Michael and Bridget will be having another baby. It's having another baby. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> In yeah. August, so. Oh, that's wonderful. 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 Congratulations so, to both of you. <laughs> thank you. So you thank would you. know. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, and I'm also, oh, you, I'm also, this is going to be a busy year for, for the two of you, for Sister Harry yeah. and Brother David. This is a, yes. a busy year, not only with family, because there's some other family things yeah. coming up uh, yeah. in 2021, yeah. uh, but yeah. also with the, uh, the family of God. Uh, Amen. Because yes. uh, there's, there's Amen. much for you yes. to do. And, and, um, and I know I, Yes, there's a lot, Sister Sherry. You're right yes, about that. Yes, 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 yes. But both of you are even, up for even, even today. It's uh, not. I can tell you, it's pouring rain here in Los Angeles, but I, I've been out on the road already, oh. just trying to get some things done. And I came back, and that's why I hooked up late because um, I had three different phone calls from different mission groups that supported Crusaders, and they're asking questions and. Yes, yes. You know, it's um they work with Sister Eleanor and yeah. are asking things about, you know, things that she did and, and they would like to continue and but they they um I told um I don't know if Mike or somebody I told yes um yesterday that uh there's a there's a guy out of out of Tennessee and he does he does basically what you guys used to do is uh, work with um, with the homeless and with uh -huh, drug addicts uh -huh. and stuff like that. He got like, I think he said he got four different shelters. He got, oh, um, wow. he got two wow. in Mississippi. His name is David Vinson. You can probably look him up. Okay, um, okay. But I think he said he got some in Mississippi. He got some in Tennessee. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he said in North Carolina. I'm not quite sure. Um, but he, um, he used to work with Sister Eleanor. And, um, and he says, you know, um, I want to continue. He was the one that sent some of the people down here to help with the, with the deaf school back in Florida, Flores to help. Yes, them yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He was the one that, um, orchestrated the guy that helped Shane to buy, buy the truck that, that we have at the mission, the mm -hmm. Kia. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so he'd been uh, pretty much involved and he wants to stay involved. Oh, wonderful. One of the things he says that he says, David, he says, um, I don't really know you. He said, I met you some time ago, but when I talked to Sister Eleanor and I, I pointed a blank, I point blank asked her the question, what was going to happen if something was to happen to her? And she said, and he said, I asked her, he says, is Shane going to take over when you go? He says, I don't think Shane is ready yet, she says. But I think David's going to be the next one to take over. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. She and I told my I, I, again. I remember Micah, whoever, but he was the third person that told me that. Yeah. And so I know there's things that's going on in the mission, and there's like different direction they want to go. But like I told Michael last night, I said, you know, I'm not in a rush. Yeah. I just let God do what God needs to do. Yes. Amen. 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 So, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just waiting yes. on God's timing and let Him do what He knows needs. Yes. To do. Right, right. Yes. But it's already in your heart. 
And it's already it in, in yes. Harriet's heart. Oh, yeah. And yes. uh, it's already in, in Florence's heart. It's already there, you know, Amen. that, um, you know, that the work, the work that was birthed in, in all of you will yes. continue. The work Amen. will continue. Yes. Amen. And, will. and this is something that, uh, that this, it makes my heart uh, leap on, on the inside of me uh, when, when I think about the work continuing on. You know, it will. that it will. Yeah. So I, I already I, told I, God I'm in my hand, I'm in his hand, and wherever he leads me, that's where I'll go. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And um, Sister Jean, the founder, yes. she said, she kept saying, you guys are being trained. Yeah. Yes. She kept, amen. Me, she kept telling me, Harriet, do not expect your husband to go out to sea because you guys are being trained. God is training you both yeah. of you yes. for this ministry. Woo! You're, being yes, trained. You're being trained. She saw that. She saw that even before we got married. Uh -huh. Amen yes. and amen. And she kept telling me and keep kept telling me. And after, you know, several years, even after we were married, I finally let go and say, God, here we are. It's whatever <laughs> you say. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yes. Yes, huh? but... yes, I had I had the same experience you had, Sister Sherry, on different occasions. <laughs> I mean, very, very different. I wanted, I didn't want to live poor. I was tired of that. I had enough of that as a child growing up. And my husband was gonna go out and work and make the finances that we needed to live. It was okay. I could I could support the ministry with the finances. That was what I was wanting. But God kept saying, no, I want both of you in the ministry. I've called both of you to the ministry. Amen. And several times it, you know, it, it happened over and over again. I had the same experiences. You're talking yeah. about <laughs> you know, and I, you know one, one time one time I, I was like I stayed home God was speaking to me and telling me that he did not want my husband working at this particular secular job he was working at and also pastoring and David kept saying to me honey I can't do both honey I cannot do both and I'm like huh well I don't know what you're gonna do but you're not stopping that job. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, you're going to continue to pass it in my, that was my attitude. That was in my heart. Yeah. And I just it, totally ignore him for a very long time. And he was, he would, you know, he wasn't upset or anything, but he would say to me like on Wednesday night, he preparing for church to go to minister on Wednesday night. And all of a sudden the phone would ring. People are calling him because their TV ain't working. That was, he was working at the cable company. <laughs> their TV ain't working. What's wrong? And he must come fix their TV on Sunday morning. It's like he's the fixer of the TV. They don't know, realize that he don't have anything to do. And that continued. And I would see them, I would hear him and I would hear his frustration, but I totally ignore him. Once on the morning, I got, I couldn't go to church, which that don't happen. <laughs> Everyone can stay home. Everyone gets sick and stay home, but that don't happen with me. I got to go to church. You know, it's like, you have to be there. So this particular Sunday morning, I had to stay home because I definitely wasn't feeling good. And I was laying down on my nice fancy couch that I had recently got because that the first we were married about 10 years and I didn't even have a nice couch and I had just finally were able to get a couch and all of a sudden I'm laying there and watching TV watching um, TVN <laughs> I can't remember which one of the minister was ministering but anyway he said God is saying to you to 
obey the call that he's called you and your <laughs> husband to do. And I'm like, Lord, you ain't talking to me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking to really to me. You're telling me through this pastor that I'm supposed to obey. You're calling me into this. And so for, I realized there was no way out. And so finally, um, I still did not tell him what I had, what the Lord had spoken to me again there on the couch that morning. Yeah. But we went off. We went off on a mission. Not on a mission. We went to a seminar all the way up in Tegucigalpa. Yeah. And while up there, at five o'clock one morning, I woke up and I'm thanking the Lord. Telling him, he's so good. He's so beautiful. He's awesome. I love him. I love him. I want to serve you, Lord. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. And all of a sudden, it was like someone threw the, I heard the voice. He was stern. He said, have I not told you to tell your husband to leave Satmak? I don't need Satmak to take care of you guys. And I jumped up out of that bed and I run to the bathroom and I start throwing water on my face. I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. <laughs> so finally, you know, I released him. And two weeks after that, he put in his resignation and he came, became full-time pastor. And I'm um, so honored. Yeah. yeah, I understand you, Sister Sherry. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> but God has not God has not failed us yet. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's never failed us. Hallelujah. And He's hallelujah. never, Sister He's Sherry. He's always been there. I mean, even Harriet tell you that story. I'm gonna tell you a really short one because I know it's already late. But even when we left and went to the States, we had promised to go to the States. I was going up there to take out a course. I was going to go for a year and then we were supposed to come back because we promised that we were going to come back and be the youth pastors of our church back on the island. We were going to well, of course, you get up there and you get really comfortable and everything seems, you know, everything seems good. I mean, we, were, we struggled for the first part of the time we were there. And then all of a sudden I got a job. I was doing good. And I totally wanted to ignore, forget everything that I promised God. Oh, wow. No, I didn't want to come back. Yeah. I wanted to stay. Yeah. But Harriet wasn't letting me stay. She would not give up. She said, we made God a promise and we're going to go back. And every time I would try to ignore it, she would bring it back to the forefront. So one day I said to her, I said, okay, pack up. We're going home. And when we left to come home, we really didn't have any money. I don't, I don't know where we were going to start. I don't know what we are going to do. And I'm, I'm, all these things are going through my mind. I mean, what am I going to go back there for? But we got back here to Honduras, and I never regret a minute of it. Amen. 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 God has kept us the whole time. Yes. 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 He's kept us the whole time. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is no struggle There's following none. the Lord. No, no not no, none no. whatsoever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you know, and, and I'm sure that some of all of this that has been going on has just been overwhelming. Yeah, I yeah. know. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not there with you uh, physically, but it's been overwhelming to both of us. Yeah, and, I believe that. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, when you get that feeling of things being overwhelmed, uh, that's when you uh, just go back into your prayer closet Amen. and, yeah, that's right. and, and you Amen. receive uh, the presence of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and, and he'll, he'll build up your, your container. He'll fill you up again. Yeah. Amen. And, um, you know, with, with, with that <laughs> grace that you need, you know, to, to do wise. what he's called yeah, you wise. to do. Yes. And while going through what you're going through. Yes, Why exactly. Going through what you're going through, because you know, even though it, it's things that we do not understand, I'll never, I don't know if I'll ever understand what happened here. Right. And right. why all three of them went and the way they went is just, uh, I'll never, it, it's like, Lord, okay. Um, but anyway, things has to continue. Right. Yes. The work has to continue. Absolutely. And, uh, and so that's where we're at, you know, in the process. Brother uh, pa Brother Fred, you didn't 
in, in the meeting that you had on the on the New Year's Eve or something you had a yeah the yeah, first, yeah New Year's Day uh huh New Year's Day I I didn't connect that day with you guys but I I watched the the the, the video after I watched the the video after and you said that you know you you know that there's pain and when there is pain you don't just let that pain just um it's like oh well there's you know you're hurting there's pain because but you're supposed to take advantage of that pain and and use that and be, and he said that there's pain is because you've lost something and when you've lost something you know who who did and when and the thief has to return that seven times. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And Amen. so, so that is where we're at with these laws. That's it's where we're at. Laws, <laughs> and I'm saying, Lord, okay, we're hurting. You said, do not let that pain go to waste, but yes. take advantage, embrace it. That's what yes. you kept saying, embrace it. Yes. And let the devil pay back. Sevenfold yeah. what he's stolen. Yes, amen. I, mean, I started to amen. pray. I started to pray, and I started to say, "Lord, okay, I've heard the word. Devil, you gotta pay back." Seven amen. Times. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, that's where we are. You know, the the hurt and the just uh, the the pain, and and we said, you know, Lord, we know it was the enemy, and and the devil has to pay back seven fall in yeah. anointing yeah okay. amen in amen anointing. In anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, more okay. people amen. saved more people amen. healed yes. more yes. people yes. with like, miracles hallelujah yes. amen and amen another thing that we're talking about more people saved and, and the more anointing sister eleanor when she was sick she kept saying this is because a revival is coming we're going to have a revival. Yeah. But then she yeah. died. And she kept on saying, the Lord is bringing a This is going to be, you know, a, a revival is going to come out of this. Then Sandy died and she died. And so then I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, I was reminded a few days ago. Well, Sister Eleanor said a revival, a revival is going to yes. come out of yes. this. Yes. Yes. And, you, and, and I'm, okay, I said, Lord, okay, let's, you know, go ahead and prepare us. For this revival because i really don't want that revival to pass us by i Amen. really want that revival to come yes. and to be what she you know what she's kept feeling this revival yes. is going to come even though she's not here she's dead and gone but she kept saying this revival was come going to come because yes. of all of this yes yes amen amen so that's more amen. souls sister sherry i be i believe it i do yes. believe it amen hallelujah amen. We're, um, okay, I'm going to ask Pastor Dave if he dismisses in prayer. Okay. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for all your goodness and your blessings and your love. We thank you for that grace that Pastor Fred talked about today. Lord, that, that grace that sustains us, that grace that's sufficient for us. Yes. Father God, we thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me yes, Lord. to preach and to teach and to minister. And God, we thank you for that anointing of your Holy Spirit that have come mm -hmm. and just and, 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 and overshadow us all. We thank you for, for uh, Pastor Fred and Sister Sherry, Lord, and the ministry, hey, Lord, that they continue, Father God, to go forth in the power and the authority for which you send them and you've given them. Hallelujah. You would anoint them and continue, Lord, to just give them the word that they would continue to share that word with us and with other people, with other, um, not only ministers, Lord, but that they that they will go forth, Lord, and, and, and all the ones that, that hear the words from them and through them, Lord God that it will continue to strengthen and it will continue to encourage and it will continue to build up and it will continue to empower yeah. Lord, each one of us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Bless Amen. each one today. Thank we you, commit them all to you in the name of Jesus, we pray God for this Amen. day, for this time and for this hour. 
in Amen. Jesus' precious Amen. name. Amen. To God Amen. be the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Bye-bye. Bye-bye. One of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next Saturday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye-bye.